said if you said if you say I'm free in my mind if you said it yeah what you say. The way I am speaks of me. And I am what I am. Because the way I am so he speaks of me. Hello. Come on in, everybody. Woohoo. You look so lovely. Just turn to the person next to you and say, You look amazing tonight. Come on. Church of Adelaide. You're a beautiful bunch. Come on in. Well, we want to welcome you tonight to Ignite. We want to welcome all denominations represented here tonight. The Church of Adelaide. From the really out there ones to the more chill, reserved ones, we love you all. And there's a place for you here tonight, and so we want to welcome you. I have a really boring notice for you. If you need to go to the toilet tonight, come on. The hub <laughs> over there behind you has toilets. And there's snacks on the table that were for the team, but no one really ate anything, so just go nuts. Um, I think there's lollies and cake and stuff. Anyway, 
So yes, we want to welcome you to Ignite tonight. We are so excited for what God's going to do in our midst. You know, it's going to be good when you're getting wrecked in the pre-service prayer already. So we want to welcome you to Ignite. But more than that, I want to welcome you because we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We have come tonight to the innumerable angels in festal gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And my favorite one, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So yes, we've come to Ignite tonight and we're so glad that you're here. But more than that, we're inviting you to come to this place, to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. He's, been in, he's invited you, every single one of you, into his holy living room. How cool is that? By the blood of Jesus, we get to enter in to the presence of God and lift up holy hands and to worship him. So we wanna pray that we have been praying <laughs> that we would enter boldly into this place tonight, to boldly into the throne room of God, and that we would bring acceptable sacrifice to Him with awe and reverence. And I'm praying that we're gonna have a restoration of awe and reverence for the living God tonight. So bring your heart to God tonight. We've kind of stripped things back a little bit, you might have noticed. We feel like the Lord really wants to draw His people to His heart, distraction-free. We've got beautiful creative expressions of worship too. We've got beautiful dance and art. Um, and I want to encourage you to, to worship God as you look at that happening too and not let that distract you. So let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Woo, how good. All right, let's worship.
sing that again in the church. And the church of Christ was born, and the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall Praise the one. Yeah. 
the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all, cause Jesus paid it all.
just take the next 30 seconds to thank you. Sing out your praise to Jesus. We, we were crimson. We are now white as snow. We thank you, God. Thank you that you wash us. Thank you, Jesus. for the blood of Jesus. I feel like the Lord's inviting us just to take a moment. Just remember, you who were once far off, we were aliens, God. We were enemies of God. And by your blood, you brought us near. You brought us near because you wanted to be with us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, where would we be without you, God? Where would we go? What hope would we have? We would have nothing without you, Lord. You raised us from death. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You did what no one else could do. Couldn't save ourselves, Lord. Though we might try, God, you're the only one that saves. You're the only name that saves. Your blood is the only thing that saves, that washes us white as snow. gave us access to the King of glory, the throne room of heaven, God. We have a seat at your table, Lord. Oh, we're so thankful, Lord. Oh, we're so thankful, God. I'm lost without you.
salvation is groaning, longing for the unseen. But here in this moment, eternity's close, closer than we think. What are they singing? What is it like? You are surrounded with thunder and light. Everything in us, the longing, the ache to join with the heavens, the anthem of praise. Oh, oh.
guys let's just take this last little moment as we adore him that's what this is about right now this moment is about adoration it's taking a moment as the church of Jesus Christ all different denominations gathering together under the one thing that all unites us which is Christ and Christ alone Christ crucified Christ glorified risen and seated at the right hand of the Father who gave his spirit to his church. So let's just join together and say, worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are worthy, Lord. Come on, lift your voices. Lift your voices all over the courtyard. Take a moment just to declare, worthy is the Lamb. Father, what a joy and a privilege it is to be able to come together and worship you. What an honour it is to be able to enter into the Holy of Holies, to sit at your feet and say, worthy, 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 to say, holy, 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 to know that we have access 
to know that we can approach the throne of mercy with boldness. And we come boldly now, Lord. Father, we ask that you would bring an encouragement to your people, Lord, that you would do something in our hearts and our lives. Lord, that this wouldn't be a moment in time, Lord, but this would be something that lasts. God, that you would do a work right now, tonight, God, that this would be something that we look back on 10, 20, 30, 40 years, say God did something in my life right there, right there. He did something tangible. He shifted, he changed me, he moved me, he broke something in me, he renewed something in me that was, I thought was long gone, lost, buried. But he is a I feel to declare that over this area tonight, that He is able. He is able to do immeasurably more than we hope or imagine. That's our God. He is able. He is faithful. He is true. We're at a Christian university and they said this wouldn't happen in South Australia many, many years ago. And I, I know Barry Chant and he, has, he will declare the faithfulness of God and that God is able in seeing this place established in this city. He is able, he is able. Praise God, praise God. I feel to, I just wanna share a few things, but I recognize you've been standing for a while. So if you wanna rest, rest your feet for a little bit and it might not be any more comfortable sitting on bricks, but if you wanna find a spot, you can say hello to someone next to you for a moment. Welcome them to Ignite. Hallelujah. So guys, it's so good to have you here with us, uh, with Ignite Ministries to, to worship the Lord, to pray, to bring in praise, join in together, different denominations from all over the place. Um, the scripture that's been on my heart, that's been on our heart as we've prayed for you guys, comes from Romans 12, one to two. And I wanna, I wanna sh speak into this in a, in a minute, but let me read it. Let's set the tone right here, right now. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Offering our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For then you will be able to test and approve what the will of God is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. Father, take your word and bless it, we pray. We know that you speak. Lord, I do not wanna leave here and everyone saying, anyone talking about Ignite or anyone talking about a word from Dave, no, this is about you. May we go singing your praise. Speak, Lord, we love you, we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, uh, at Ignite, our goal, our aim, uh, the reason that we exist is that we long to encourage and edify the church. And we long to, to gather the church that you might be built up, that you might be strengthened, that you might be encouraged in Christ through an encounter with God. And maybe in a, in a way that is different, that's unique, that's special from something you've ever done before. And the reason I say unique and special, because it's not often that we get to gather, gather with brothers and sisters from break, like break the denominational bubble and come together. And I believe that God, it says that, um, that unity commands a blessing. And I believe that when we gather like this, that God does pour out His blessing. And so as we encounter the presence of God and as we engage in this, this beautiful community of faith, we believe that the church is built up, that the church is strengthened. And that is our heart, friends. Our heart is that you would be strengthened, that you would run the race with perseverance. 
And as we have prayed, and friends, we have been praying. Like we don't just pray tonight. We've, this team has been praying in the lead up to this event. We've been praying for you. We've been praying for the Church of Adelaide. And what has been burden on me, what, has, what my heart is almost grieving over, is that there are so many brothers and sisters who start well and don't finish. But that we would be at the church, that we would finish the race. You know, Paul's charge to Timothy that finish the race. You know, Paul, he, he says, press on toward the goal to win the prize for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That is why we exist, that you would run well and that you wouldn't just encounter God and have a moment and and say, gee, that was nice. But no, God would light something in you. That, that, hence ignite, that there would be a fire lit in your heart and your soul. And you would leave here and you would go back to your local church. And you would invest in your local church. And they would see that fire. John Wesley said, catch fire and people will come to watch you burn. That's how revival starts. That a fire would be lit. And that we would run the race with perseverance. Because the time is short. And the harvest is plentiful. The time is short and the harvest is plentiful. You know, I was at a church up in the Gold Coast a few weeks ago. And they, they, the pastor, who's a friend of mine, he said something which just impacted me profoundly. He said, the church doesn't have a mission. The mission of God has a church. And I was like, that is so good. You know, when you have those moments like, come on preach that more and he just said it and then went on to another thing I was like come on you gotta the mission of God has a church we are the vessel through which God wants to work to 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 make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and he is looking for willing and able vessels made able by the power of his spirit at work in us and the time is short you know, I, I turned 39 a few weeks ago. <laughs> Gave my son a shoulder ride and he said, Dad, there's a hole in your head because I'm just starting to thin a little bit. <laughs> and we're at a point now, my oldest son who's here tonight, which is really exciting, where he's entering high school next year. And it's frightening, right? Because you, you just have this increasing awareness that the time is short because all of a sudden my baby is about to go to high school and so as a part of going to high school we took him on a school tour and we went to my old high school because we're like maybe this is a place you want to go he had a look and it was fast and he went on this school tour and it was so cool I don't know who enjoyed it more whether it was him or whether it was me because he was seeing all this stuff he's never seen before and I was just seeing all the change right like when I was there, it was literally like a tin shed with some transportables and this gravel basketball court. And that was pretty well it. And now they've got like 3D printing and they've just got laser cutters and they've got actual buildings and they've got open plan learning and one-to-one laptops and all this stuff. I'm like, man, this is so cool. Like there's, there's so much incredible stuff that's happened in this place over the last, I'm not going to say the number of years. And I got in the car after, and as I got in the car, I had that, whether it's that, you know, that gentle whisper, whether it's God, whether it's just my thoughts, but I just had this, this moment where I felt like the Lord just prompted me and said, remember the dark room? And you, most of you don't even understand what that is. You see, when I, it, it took me back to when I was his age and I was doing a tour of the same school and going through it because there wasn't a whole lot to show, right? The highlight, like the creme de la creme, the... The, the selling point of this school was tucked in the back of the art faculty department area. And it was a room with no light where you could process photos. Like you could take film, and, and for those of you who don't know what film is, Google it. <laughs> and you could take film out of a camera and yet if light gets on it, it ruins it. So it'd be this room which was completely dark and, and you could process film. I remember walking into that room thinking, wow, this is amazing. Like, you can process film. You don't have to go to the shops and get someone to do it for you. You guys can do it yourself. This is incredible. I can't wait to come here. 
just sold. So I sat in the car and I just started laughing to myself because I was thinking, imagine if you could go back in time. Like if I could hop in a time machine, go back to that room 25 years ago and just imagine the conversation. Like walking in there and be like, what are you guys doing? And they'll be like, we're, we're processing film. they would be like, why are you doing that in here? And they'd be like, well, where else would you do it? And I'd be like, <laughs> here. <laughs> I'd be like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you just like take a photo and if you don't like it, you just delete it. And if you do like it, you can edit it, you can change it and you can post it. You can do all these cool, they'd just be like, what the heck? They'd be like, is that a camera? And you'd be like, well, kind of, it, it's a phone. Like, a phone? Like, well, it's a phone and a camera. And they're like, a phone and a camera? Like, just imagine the conversation that would go on, right? Like, technology has changed everything, hasn't it? Technology's changed everything, even when it hasn't changed anything. A, a short while ago, my daughter wanted to heat something up in the microwave. She gets on a chair to get up there to put something in the microwave, and she pauses. She goes, Dad, what's the password to the microwave? Everything else is a password. Why wouldn't the microwave have a... Technology's changed everything. It's, it's changed everything. And so much of it has been for the good. So much of it, like we've, you know, medical advances. There's so many good things. Right now we're able to stream this event to the corners of the globe because of technology. Like the gospel has gone forth in ways it could never have gone forth. It's the new Roman road. Technology has been amazing. We are truly the Insta generation. And we can, we can reach people immediately. We can do all these great things because of it. But there is a dark side. And there is a negative. And we know so much of the fallout from that because what God creates, Satan will counterfeit. And God creates it for his glory and for our good and Satan will counterfeit it for our destruction. But I think actually one of the, the greatest negatives of this instant generation where we are going is an is now a lack patient endurance and an understanding of the way of faith because we are an insta generation but i do not believe that god is an insta god Yes, hear me. Yes, I believe he can when he wants to. I believe in a God who can heal in a moment. I believe in a God who can reveal himself to his people in a moment. I believe in a God who can transform lives in a moment. I believe in a God that can do that. But when I read the scriptures, I see that God is more interested in the big picture than he is in the moment. That he is about building faith in the hearts of humanity. When you read the scriptures, you just have to look at Moses who wandered in a desert for 80 years. You look at Abraham who waited. You look at Hebrews 11. You look at the hall of faith. Every single one of those people were called to a life of endurance. And it says that none of them saw the reward. That there is a greater call. There is a picture. There is a plan that God is out working for humanity. And that is to bring a people unto himself. He is about his bride. And he is coming back for a pure spotless bride. And a bride that, that is caught up in who he is and will endure to the end. And Paul talks about this over and over and over again. Where he talks about running the race. He talks about endurance. He talks about patience. And he says, you know. Faith, faith is, is something that is forged through fire. Faith isn't about feelings. And an instant generation is driven by feelings. One or two things go wrong and we think God's abandoned us. Something bad happens in my life and they say, where are you God? As opposed to recognising that just maybe the testing of our faith develops endurance. You know, James, I'm going to read this to you. James, James 2, he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, endurance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. 
Listen to this, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. God wants his bride to get a crown of life. And we will lay that crown back at his feet, but he's done it for a crown. He says, so this is about faith and faith is about endurance and it's about enduring to the end. And therefore the insta way is not my way. My way is the way of endurance. How do we endure to the end? How do, what, what, what message can we preach? How do we become this bride, these people who endure to the end? In an Insta generation, in an Insta culture where everything is now and I'm looking for it now, where I want my vending machine, God, where I do my tithes and I say the right prayer and God says, bang. How do we live counterculturally? And this is why we need to come to the Word. And as we come to the Word, we see all through Scripture this beautiful picture of people who endure. We actually see with Israel, do you know Israel, three times a year, they would, they would make a pilgrimage. They would journey from wherever they were to Jerusalem for worship, for festivals. And some of these people would walk with their entire families, young families that have that have children, that have themselves, that have their parents, that have their grandparents, that have their livestock. This would be a huge traveling party. They'd pick everything up and some of them would walk up to 200 kilometers to get to the worship festival three times a year. They'd be walking for maybe three weeks. And as they walked for three weeks, they're facing all sorts of dangers. They're facing disillusionment. They're facing despair. Sometimes there's delight, sometimes there's good, but this is a genuine journey and I know journey has been overused, so I don't say journey lightly because I know everyone's on their journey, like they're on their love journey, and then they go on a reality television show and date 26 people at one time. <laughs> or they're on their food journey, so they go on a reality television show and cut tomatoes and cry because grandma used to cut tomatoes this way. Like, I get that everyone's on a journey, but I want to reclaim journey. <laughs> Because the, the Christian life is genuinely a journey. It is a, you know, Frederick Nietzsche actually said that, that, that faith, that, that this perseverance, this journey is a long walk in one direction. That we are called to a genuine journey, a walking after God, a walking after Christ through whatever comes our way, not being blown to the left and to the right, not being swayed by the winds of this world, not even in the Psalms where I look to the hills, the hills was where the pagan gods were. The hills was where all the distractions were. Well, where does my help come from? Does it come from that God? Does it come from that God? Does it come from wealth? Does it come from fame? Does it come from me doing this? Does it come from acceptance? Does it come from this? And he says, no, 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 no. my help comes from the Lord. And so they would, they would journey, they would do this journey all the way towards Jerusalem and week after week would pass and they'd eventually, as the journey gathered on, what started with them and their family, all of a sudden there'd be other families, they meet along the road and then other families and other families and you get to Jerusalem and all of a sudden the temple comes into sight. This massive, glorious, wonderful Seven, one of the ancient, seven ancient wonders of the world. This thing is incredible. And the Levites would be there and there would be laughing and dancing and celebration. There'd be noise. There'd be all this wonderful stuff and their spirits would lift as they came to Jerusalem ready to worship God. But guess what? The thing that sustained them on the journey was not the building. The thing that sustained them on the journey wasn't the crowd. The thing that sustained them on the journey wasn't which priest happened to be preaching at the temple that day. Which Levite was singing in the sanctuary that day. That is not what sustained them. That is not what kept them moving. No, what kept them there was what sat at the very center of the temple. And what sat at the very center of the temple was the Holy of Holies. And we got a little image here of a floor plan of the temple. 
And so what would happen is that these people would come to the temple and there would be this great joy and excitement and it says that you enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and there would be all of that as the Levites were welcoming them in and then you would catch a glimpse of the curtain and you would know that behind the curtain was the presence of God but in front of it was an altar and the people had a profound understanding of their need for the presence, that there is Him and in Him is life. But the only way to the presence was through the altar. This is what kept them going, is a profound realisation of their need for the altar. They couldn't stop. Because if they stopped, they wouldn't get to bring their sacrifice. And if they didn't get to bring their sacrifice, then they don't get the life. That they understand that without the presence of God is no life. That they, yes, they might be alive in the flesh, but they're dead in the spirit. And so they have to come and they have to bring their sacrifice. And at the sacrifice, their sins are declared forgiven. They are declared free. And they are united with God on high. And then they would leave and they would leave so excited that that this sacrifice had been done and they would return to their home and then just a month or two later they'd start the journey all over again. See, what sustained them was the bleeding sheep in front of them as they would walk for three weeks knowing that that was the lamb who would be slain for the forgiveness of their sins and they had to get to the altar. And friends, I've just had this conviction on my heart that the reason people are falling away is that we have forgotten about the altar. We've forsaken the altar. We come for the show. We come for the programs. We come for the preachers. We come for the worship leaders. And our Insta generation, I don't like that. Well, I'll just choose a different flavour. And I'll come over here and I'm going to listen to that person. I'll listen to that podcast and I'll listen to this. But we've forsaken the altar. I need to read you something from Eugene Peterson because this has absolutely and positively wrecked my life. This is what Eugene Peterson says. It is not difficult in such a world as this insta generation to get a person interested in the message of the gospel. He didn't say insta generation. I put that in there. It is terrifically difficult to sustain the interest. Millions of people in our culture make decisions for Christ, but there is a dreadful attrition rate. Many claim to have been born again, but the evidence for mature Christian discipleship is slim. In our kind of culture, anything, even news about God can be said if it is packaged freshly, but when it loses its novelty, it goes on the garbage heap. There is a great market for religious experience in our world. There is little enthusiasm for patient acquisition of virtue, little inclination to sign up for the long apprenticeship in what earlier generations of Christians called holiness. He goes on to say that we are religious tourists living in a cultural moment where people claim to be Christians seeking high points, a weekly, fortnightly, monthly visit to a church, a conference here, a podcast there, moving from moment to moment to taste the good stuff, but never truly embracing the journey with God. Our heart at Ignite is that you would embrace the journey by realising your need for the altar. And here's the thing, those guys knew they had a sacrifice to bring We come to a different altar. We live in the world where that God who dwelt behind the curtain stepped down from heaven, lived a perfect life, did the insta things, changing people's lives to reveal his lordship and his glory, but then he offered himself on an altar, which is the cross. And as he offered himself up on the cross, that curtain tore in two 
And as the curtain was torn into, it meant that the presence of God is now accessible to all. Not just to a priest, but every single person who would call on the name of the Lord will be saved. We can enter into that life, enter into that holy place, enter into the very presence of God to receive mercy in our time of need. But friends, He did not do it so we would bypass the altar. We still have to go through it. We just go through the very sacrifice of Christ. We don't bring a lamb anymore. The lamb of God was slain but not so we can just bypass the altar. It's so that we can bring our lives as a living sacrifice to that altar, that we come to Him and we die to self. And as we die to self, His life is made manifest in us. There is a daily laying down of all that I am, recognising that apart from Him, I am nothing. I am the dust of the earth, but I lay down my life and I am filled with the fullness of His life. And in Him is power and in Him is joy and in Him is peace and in Him is everlasting, eternal, glorious life. In Him is a crown of life. In Him is a crown. And a day is going to come where I get to stand before Him, having passed through Him the new and living way. And I get to lay that crown at His feet and I get to say, thank you, Jesus, for laying your life on the altar. But the call of God is a call to following. We are caught in a world, and this has been, I don't know if there's some pastors or leaders here, but this has been on my heart, pastors and leaders especially. It is so easy to get caught up in fame. It is so easy to get caught up pursuing followers. I feel to remind you, no, 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 no. You are called to a life of following. First and foremost, We need to lay our programs down. We need to pick up the presence of God. We need to bring our lives to the altar. Leaders, everyone, we need to bring our lives to the altar. Laura, you can come back up. We need to lay our lives down, living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Why? Because this is our spiritual act of worship. What good is a song without sacrifice? good is praise unless our hearts are prostrate before him he's called us to follow him he says pick up your cross and follow me church by picking up our cross that's not a nice image we've turned it into just a phrase we say it means to die to self and come alive to him and can I tell you Can I tell you, it's the only way to life. It's the only way to life. Freedom and fullness of life is found in sacrifice and surrender. It's countercultural, I know, but as we yoke ourselves to Him, we find freedom. I don't know what you need freedom from right now, Christ has come to set us free. But the problem is we want the hand of God, but we're not prepared to die to self and follow the heart of God. We stand in events and we claim revival. God wants to revive our hearts. Maybe if the church just lay our lives on the altar. Maybe if we come before the living God and say, less of me and more of you. Just maybe we would see that revival we long to see. Just maybe the world would see a group of people who are set apart and sanctified be drawn to that. A 
I believe tonight that the call of God is for us to come to the altar again. The altar is not a place we come to once when we put up our hand and say, yes, I want to receive Jesus as Lord. Maybe you've done that 20 odd years ago, five years ago, I don't know how old you are. But the, this is a living sacrifice. This is a daily walk of repentance, a daily turning from myself and living for Him, a daily saying, yes, Lord, all of you and none of me. I lay my life down on the altar. I lay it all down. I lay my hopes. I lay my dreams. I lay my failures. I lay my, my struggles. I lay my successes. I lay everything down at your feet. And I say, I can't do this without you. I need you. We need Christ. The church needs Christ. It's time to put Christ back in Christian. That He would be magnified. That He would be holy, that He would be made glorious in our lives, that He would be all in all. And in so doing, as we humble ourselves, we become the vessel that He can finally use to do the work He longs to do because we don't have a mission. He has a mission and the, the means through which He achieves His mission is His church. He's like, I want to revive this world. I want to revive Adelaide. I want to revive. I want to move in might and power. I'm just looking for a people who would die to self, pick up their cross and come follow me. Come follow me. So I want you to stand to your feet. trying to compose myself. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to run well. My prayer is that like Paul, I can get to the end and say, I fought the good fight, not by my own strength, but by Christ in me. And I know the only way that that will happen is Christ in me, the hope of glory. <laughs> Which means I have to die. Uh, that's right. And He has to be all in all. I've got to wake up every day and say, take my life. Come to the altar sacrifice holy and pleasing to God do not conform to this pat the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what the will of God is some of you have been waiting for God to speak some of you have been asking for clarity some of you have been longing that God would intervene in a situation and he's saying don't conform to the pattern of this world be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come to the altar. Then you will know the will of God. Then you can test and approve His good, pleasing and perfect will. So friends, in this next moment, in this next song, I want to give us an opportunity just to physically respond to the work that God is doing internally. If you're at a point where you're like, yeah, I need this. It's time to die to self all over again. I want to encourage you to take a knee as we sing this song. And just let the Lord minister to your soul. Come to the altar. See the altar. the slaughterhouse as people came in there they went from partying to reverence real quick as they saw the priest in knee deep blood from all the sacrifices we don't think of it like that but it was an abattoir and you come into that place and you very quickly have a realisation of the seriousness of sin the seriousness of sin power of God to transform for those who would
bring it to him. And trust him for life and life to the full. Would you come? Would you take a moment at the altar and give it to him? And then Jules is going to come up and he's going to lead us in some prayer. But we just want to have a moment right now. Jesus high and lifted up and to respond to what he's stirring in our hearts to offer our bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God loving heavenly father how we love you how we praise you how we honour and adore you Father, as we sit here as representatives of the whole church of Jesus Christ, humbly we come. We don't want to be a people who have fleeting faith. We want faith forged in fire that it would become a shield of faith that lasts the distance. That when the enemy comes to throw his fiery darts, those darts would not penetrate, that we would not be swayed or moved because we know that you have brought us through. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you did not Being in very nature, God, you did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. You took on the very nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death upon a cross. You gave your life on the altar and now you are high and lifted up, seated at the right hand of the Father, worthy of praise, worthy of honour, worthy of glory the only one who can open the scroll, the only one who can set eternity right, the only one who can bring humanity back to what it was created for, which is intimacy with the Father. You are the only one who can bring true life. You are the only one who can set us free from the curse of sin and death. You who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Take our lives. Take our lives. We worship you. We honour you. Thank you, Jesus. sing this song let's declare this I believe as we do that the Lord just wants to just bring some restoration to some people's hearts and I want to invite you as we sing it to kneel before the Father and say take my life take my life gift would still be too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Let's lay our lives at the feet of the cross. Thank you. You
Far 
you to you tonight. It might be very different from what you're used to. The way that we are worshiping right now with beautiful space. This here is called prophetic worship. What prophetic worship is, is unscripted, just out of your heart flowing with worship towards our King. In this space right now is a beautiful opportunity. And you know, the Bible says that God is looking for people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so as we've heard about tonight already, it's not about the words on the screen. It's not about the songs that we sing. It's about our heart posture towards Jesus. I'm going to invite us tonight. In the next minute or two, we're just going to give a little bit more space here. If you've never worshipped in this way before, if you've never closed your eyes, lifted up your hands, if you've never told Jesus that you think He's beautiful, tonight is an opportunity for you to encounter Him in His beauty and in His glory. I want to invite everybody tonight, why don't you just close your eyes. Picture that beautiful one who is seated on the throne. Picture the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Spirit of God has given us an ability to see Him in His beauty. In the next minute or so, the guys are going to continue to flow in just beautiful space, prophetically. And I'm going to encourage you, if something starts to stir up within your heart, if you want to tell Him that you love Him, you tell Him that you love Him. If you want to tell Him that He's beautiful, you tell Him with all of your heart. This might be an opportunity for you in your life to experience something you never had before. It's a one-on-one encounter with Jesus. So we're just going to flow for one more minute. I invite you guys, just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
is our altogether lovely one. We are not here for just another meeting. We're not here just for another moment. We're here to meet with our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. We are here to meet with our Father, the God of all creation, the one who loves us more than anything. We are here for one thing, for one thing, for one thing. I want to minister something over us as a family tonight, the Church of Christ, the Church of Adelaide, this family. What Dave brought earlier was incredibly beautiful and so key. You can feel the somberness in that moment of just the reality of what Jesus has done for us and what he's called us to. And I, can, I want to continue to minister in that flow because I feel like God is still moving tonight. I want to set someone free this yeah. evening. There is something that I've heard across Christian circles and I'm going to set you free on this tonight. You are not still a sinner once you've given your life to Jesus. You are not still a sinner. Once you've given your life to Jesus, His blood has washed away everything. Every sin, everything that you did that was against Him, everything that you did that was contrary to His nature, He has totally set you free. And what's so amazing about that is Hebrews speaks on it and it says, the blood of bulls and calves, it couldn't cleanse the conscience. It made atonement for that moment, but it couldn't make perfect and it couldn't cleanse the conscience. Church of Adelaide, I'm here to tell you that your conscience, the things that have tried to pull you back into that old life, the things that have tried to remind you of things you've done in the past has been completely washed by the power of the blood of Jesus. You are totally, totally set free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I believe one of the things that entraps us sometimes is going back and revisiting the past. We're not called to revisit the past, we're called to look to our future, the King of Kings, the God of glory. We are called to behold Him. And I love what, what Dave was preaching because He is calling us deeper into His presence, deeper into His presence. I wanna paint this visual before you. If you've ever looked at the tabernacle and the way everything was set up, you had the altar of sacrifice followed by the bronze laver, which was the place of washing. Into the holy place was a place where there was the showbread and the lampstand and then the altar of incense that was before the curtain. And then behind that curtain, like we heard, the beautiful presence, the glory of God that would rest in that place. What I love about that is if you look at the way that it was set up, it's set up that the altar of sacrifice is in the east and the presence, the glory of God is in the west. And the scripture says, that in that day, He will remove our sin as far as the east is from the west. Isn't that amazing? He's taken us from a place of sin so that He can bring us into the place of His glory, into the place of His presence. Isn't that incredible? And it says that you and I have been made partakers of that divine nature of Jesus Christ, that we actually don't live in the flesh any longer, but we live according to the Spirit of God. You and I have a new nature. We are different. We are different. And so to dwell in this new nature, guys, I wanna equip this beautiful city with something so precious. Because oftentimes we run to the blood after we've sinned, we take communion and we we come back to that place and that's absolutely right. We must always run back to the blood of Jesus, the foot of the cross every time. He is gracious and merciful and He forgives. But I love this song that that we just sang, make me holy, I wanna be holy. The reality of it is that Jesus has said that you are a holy generation, a holy nation unto His name. You've already been made holy. But can I give you a secret? The secret to walking in a holy lifestyle. Run to the blood before you've made a mistake. Stay under the body and the blood of Jesus. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because that body and that blood is speaking for us every single day. Protection, safety, blessing, covering, Jesus' blood and the finished work of the cross speak for us day after day after day. It never, ever stops. It never, ever stops. And so do you want to know the way to enter into walking in the presence and His glory always? It says that the blood of the Lamb was sprinkled on the mercy seat. The glory of God rests upon and in the blood of Jesus. Does that make sense to someone here tonight? So when you stay under the blood, when you stay under that covering, when you partake of that holy communion, you are basically saying, I know my identity. 
I know that I've been made righteous before Christ. I know that I've been made holy before Christ. And what happens is that nature that is fleshly and tries to pull you back into sin and pull you back into the things that you once were in, that thing quiets its mouth. Because you see, you and I have been born again by the Spirit of God, not by the flesh, by the Spirit of God. And God has called us sons to be led, to walk in the Spirit. And so those fleshly things, that voice that always niggles at you, that voice that always tempts you, that voice that always tries to pull you back, that voice starts to grow dim and fade away. Because there's a communion and an intimacy with Jesus that becomes more real to you than that sin nature ever was. And so once you close your eyes tonight, I wanna minister this word over every one of us. Just receive again the preciousness, the reality of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we wanna thank you that it's by the sacrifice that we can come near. We wanna thank you that it's by the sacrifice that you have called us a royal priesthood unto your name. You have called us kings, Lord God. You have called us a holy generation, righteous ones before the Father. That as we sang about, when you look at us, you look at us as pure and spotless, just like the lamb was when he gave his life. Father God, I thank you that in this beautiful city, There is a people that are being raised up that are holy and that are pure and that are righteous and that will walk with God all the days of their life. Father God, I thank you that you've taken us out of sin nature, that none of us here will continue to walk in that sin nature, Lord God. We will make a decision right now that we will walk in the Spirit from this day forward, that we will walk as Jesus walked, as the Scripture says. And then, Lord, it's not by our own might, not by our own power, not by our own strength. It's by the Spirit of God by the grace that was poured out through the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. And we know this, that if we do sin, we run straight back to that cross and so we say, Father, I'm so, so sorry. And in a moment again, that redemptive power raises us up to the fullness of our identity all over again. You are powerful in God more than you know, church. You have a great destiny and a great purpose and a great purpose. The last practical key that I wanna leave us with that will bless someone tonight. Hebrews 10, it's verse 19 to 23. And it speaks about this, I'm paraphrasing, but it says, since we have this confidence and boldness to access the presence of God by the sacrifice of Jesus, it says, let us hold fast to that faith, that persevering faith that Dave preached about. And as we hold fast to that, let us consider each other as a family, as a church, Mm. and let us stir each other up for love and for good works. You were called to good works for the kingdom. You don't have to be a preacher or a pastor or a minister because God has qualified you to do good works for His kingdom. You have been qualified before the Father to go and do good works. But I love what it finishes off with in that verse and it says, and let us not forsake the gathering together as in the habit of some. Do you know why it's so important that we don't forsake the gathering together? And that gathering speaks of the church. Yes, there is a fellowship in this gathering, but that gathering speaks of your local church. Because under the local church, there is a covering that protects you. Do you know when Jesus spoke the parable and he said that that heaven rejoices when he goes after the one that has left the 99, do you know that that one was once a part of the flock? It's not talking about someone that hasn't known Jesus before. I need to bring bring that very clearly. It's not talking about someone that hasn't given their life. It's talking about someone that was a once part of the house and that has walked away. See, God is about redemption. God is about bringing people back. And why He's bringing people back into His flock? Because the shepherd looks after his flock. If you're the sheep that wanders off, the shepherd can't look after you because you're not a part of the flock that He's shepherding. I wanna encourage us tonight, church, there is no perfect church. Let me settle you in that right now. I understand that different churches and different things and, and, and stuff may have taken place in the past and I'm. I'm not knocking or saying anything about that, but what I am saying is this. Find a beautiful local church that you love. If you've left the church, I wanna wanna encourage you today, come back to the covering. Come back to the anointing. Come back to the safe place that God has brought us and has enabled us to walk in. There is no perfect church, guys. But there is a Jesus who looks after His church. Yeah. And so I wanna encourage you, if you're in a place and if you're, even if you're in a church and you're unhappy with what you're seeing in your church, pray. Pray for your church. Amen. Pray for your leaders. Do you know how beautiful it is 
when people that are in the house honor and love and pray for the leaders that are in the house. I'm saying this as a son in my house, in the church that I'm at. I also have picked up this thing in my heart to say, hey, we recognize that it's a difficult job to be a pastor. It's a tough job to be a leader. There is so much that you have to give yourself to. And we, as people of Adelaide, and if you agree, stand with me right now. We wanna make our leaders' lives an absolute joy, an absolute privilege. And so I wanna encourage you, come back to your church. Put your head down, serve, pick up the heart. What can I do? How can I be a blessing to this family? Because that's what true love is. It's sacrificial, it's about one another. That's why it says consider each other. Once you recognize that God has made you clean and pure and whole, then you can look outwardly mm. and care for others. That's right. Thank you. Close your eyes as I pray one more time. And worshipers are gonna lead us in this last beautiful song. Father, for every single one of us, Lord God, we wanna be under the covering that you have ordained, Lord God, in your ways. As Dave said, Lord God, we want your hand, but we want your ways also, Lord God. We want your power and your ways. Precious Jesus, I thank you that you would do a redemptive work tonight, a work of reconciliation tonight, Lord God, Would you would bring the one back into the sheepfold, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that more than everything being perfect, you are about love and fellowship and communion with the body, Lord God. And Father, your word says to honor one another, to prefer one another, Lord God. And so, Lord, we wanna take up, we wanna take up the character and the nature of Jesus who came, even though he was equal to God, did not consider it a robbery. He laid down his life in love to serve, to give himself. And Father, as a church, we say we wanna lay down our lives. We wanna serve, we wanna give ourselves, Lord God, because the reality is that your kingdom is far precious, more precious than we've ever known, Lord God. But I pray, Lord God, tonight there'd be a revelation of the kingdom, the bride of Christ and the beauty and the glory that she is designed to walk in. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. As the musos lead us out now, if that's in your heart, just make a partnership. Just say, yes, God. Yes, God, I want that. Yes, God, I'll give myself to that. Yes, God, I'll serve your bride. Precious Jesus, precious Jesus.
To treasure you above all others To love you like we love no other And your greatness soon will be uncovered And all the earth will then know
guys, we, we have to leave at some point, but we don't want to do that without giving people an opportunity for prayer, to come and receive prayer. We've got our team here, they've got lanyards on, there's a bunch of people. We would love to pray with you. Firstly, I really feel on my heart, as, as Jules was talking about, staying under the blood, you know, staying at that altar, that if there's some people here, when the Bible tells us to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, if you're not running in that new nature and you know there's stuff that's holding you back, you know there's something that you need to bring to the altar, that you need to specifically confess. We want to give you the opportunity tonight to come and do that and to come and walk in that new nature. And so we want to invite you. We go, are we going to sing? We'll sing one more song. But come (laughs) and just in in this beautiful environment, an opportunity just to say, hey, look, I just need, I I need to walk in my new nature. Mm. I I need to come to that altar and I, I want to lay some stuff down. We've got people that love to pray with you. Secondly, if there's something going on in your life that you need breakthrough in, that's the word I've got, breakthrough. I don't know what that looks like for you, but if there's that, you need breakthrough in something. Maybe there's a decision you need to make and you just have no clarity and you need breakthrough. Maybe there's something, you're, an illness you're fighting or uh, something you're going through and you're like, I just need breakthrough. I need the power of God to come in and just do something in my life afresh. Put me back on that path, that, that, that journey of faith, just to be encouraged and strengthened. If you need strengthening today, we'd love to pray with you. So come, come, the ministry team will clear out some space. Come. Don't be shy. Stay. It's such a good thing to get prayer. Man, when we offer prayer, I like to go and get prayer too. Everybody needs prayer. There's nothing better than getting prayed for. So come and receive that prayer. As we do that, as that opportunity happens, I want you to turn to the screen. We've got a QR code up here. On that QR code, a couple of things. One is, as Jules was talking about, connecting to a local church. We're passionate about the local church. We are not the local church. We are a gathering of the broader church. Uh, but we will long for people to connect to local church. So if you're here and you're looking for a local church, check out that QR code and there's an opportunity you can sign up and we'll connect you with, with one in your area, uh, you know, where you're at. So we'd love to connect you to a local church. Two, if you would like to contribute financially to this ministry, we would invite you to do that. This is not your tithe. You tithe again to your local church. This is above that. This is an opportunity to give. This is a volunteer organization. Uh, No one gives us money outside of this. So uh, if you believe in what God's doing in this call, please, we invite you to contribute financially to this. And thirdly, the coffee guys are still at the back. Way to go, Matt Crook. We love you. Uh, They are serving hot chocolate and chai. So for those of you who don't want caffeine in your system at this time of night, go and get one of them. And, uh, yeah, support those guys who have come out here tonight as well. So they're the things. Come, receive prayer. We're going to sing and we're going to worship God and then go have a great night. It's daylight savings tomorrow, so you get an extra hour's sleep. Praise God. Awesome. Come, 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 come. Let's pray. Come and get, come and get prayer.
God of revival, so let hope arise, death is overcome, and you've already won, how God of revival, your darkest Yes, Lord, let it be so in this city, in this state, and in this nation. Mm. Yes, Lord, you can send us. Mm. Amen. Amen and amen. If you're still yet to receive prayer tonight and you'd like to receive prayer, just raise your hand and we'll send somebody to you. We're also the priesthood of all believers, so we can pray for one another. So just reach out to somebody that's beside you. Thank you for coming tonight, everybody. You are, please stay as long as you like. We love you. And we'll see you at the next one. Excuse me for a minute.